Listening to the station that's been on and operated by your friends and neighbors for over 72 years. The Big 14. Five in a row. Come on, baby. Let's boogie. Number one then. And number one in local talk now. Hey, this is Live with Lou broadcasting high atop Mount Hoot. KMYC. 1410 AM. Marysville, Cuba City. This is Laura Ingram. Join me every weekday morning on The Patriot. Stay tuned live with Lou is next. Don't touch that dial on 1410 The Patriot. It's two things in this world that I cannot stand. Flaws and liberals. (laughs) They always crying and melting every time you disagree with them. Every time Trump opened his mouth, they run to their mama's basement to cry and complain about life. You can't even have a real debate with the liberal. They don't care about facts. They don't know why they want Trump impeached. Half the snowflakes complaining didn't even get out there and vote. But you know what? You ask them why they are mad at Trump, they gonna say, well, CNN told us to be mad. <laughs> they need to go. Welcome back. This is Lou Benninger, and we're out here on Mount Hoot today. Me and the wiki man, Robert E. Leon Lampkin, I think is down somewhere in one of the A states. I think it's Arkansas. So he may be listening to Leon. If you care about us and you, you paid attention to the time change between where you are and where we are, welcome, Leon. We miss you. We wish you were here sitting there, your smiling face, drinking your full-blown Coca-Cola, rotting your teeth out in your stomach, not taking my health food advice. But we're here today on Mount Hooth. If you don't ever know about Mount Hooth, if this is new to you, this is out here in Northern California in Yuba County, one of the poorest of 58 counties. Uh, If you don't have an itch, we'll give you one to scratch out here in Yuba County. We're We're the county that actually paid to have poison oak planted in our river bottoms to keep people uh, out of the areas that we didn't want to. Hey, can you imagine that? Planting something that's Ill- allergic to. Do you remember back there when that happened? When they thought it was a great idea to plant poison oak in our river bottoms. and where we, So Yuba County was pay, paying to plant poison oak in the valley and, and then paying their employees to spray herbicide on it in the foothills. Does that make sense to you? Didn't be, make to me, but that's just, I'm just telling you about where we're broadcasting from. It's wild out here, and uh, there is uh, a lot of marijuana being grown out here. Just in the last few weeks, they've collected 16, was it six? Let's see, it had a six in it. Was it 6,000 plants? I, I was shocked. I mean, that, that would intoxicate whole Northern California. So uh, we got lots of marijuana being grown out here. We got people that are from all over the United States and not out of this country growing marijuana. Up here in the Yuba County Hills, it's good grow area. And up until just a few weeks ago, nobody's doing anything about it until a couple of our, really the finest people in our community, two deputies for Yuba County Sheriff's Department, were shot by a guy. They got called to defend a woman that was growing uh, marijuana illegally to go up and defend her property, which was illegal property. And they got, both of them got themselves shot until they, sent that guy to Jesus and let him know he was on his way. So uh, that's Yuba County, and 
we got our hands full up here, and we got politicians, maybe like a lot of you, some of them are perverts, some of them are liars, uh, some of them are cheats, some of them think they, they came from God, and the rest of us came from the devil. They try to hide what they do from us. So we're out here uh, trying to talk it up here for three hours today. If you're new to us, this is called the Patriot Radio Station. It's also called KMYC. If you've never heard of that, KM like in Mickey, KMYC. It's 1410 AM if you care about that. I think somebody said we're supposed to say that, the federal federal something something, right? It's not a free country anymore, so the socialists tell you what to say and what products to say and uh, what products to sell, and if they don't, they'll kumar you. Oh, you're new to the show. If you don't know what kumar means, that means you get screwed by people like uh, the Yuba City uh, development people over there. They'll tell you what to, they want all your taxes. They won't invest any money. They won't help you out, but they'll tell you everything about your business, how you got to run it, what kind of signs you have to have, what kind of lighting you have to have, what color the place is, right? And uh, what you can sell, what you can't sell. How much you pay your employees, how late you can wait, work, when, do, when you can open up. What you got to pay them if they work longer than this many hours. Sounds like socialism to me, folks. Well, we're out here at KMYC Radio. If you want to, if you're out there in the fringe area and our signal is getting a little weak on this AM side, you can go to KMYC Radio on your stolen laptop if you're from Oliver and Linda, and you can dial in KMYCRadio.com. Uh, for you guys out in Linda, you got to go to the internet first and then kmycradio.com and then click on the listen live button and if our they call it streaming i'm not very sharp on this stuff but they say if that's working you should be able to hear us loud and clear if you prefer fm they say we're we have a simulcast on 104.3 so you can check that out if you wish so if you want to call us i'll give you our number but this is a pre-record it's not like leftovers or retreads or the worst of. We're just recording this a couple days early or a couple nights early because I got to be in Reno and driving back from Reno when I should be sitting in this station because I got to go up there for a trauma intervention program, national conference. It rotates around the United States, but this year it's in Reno, and I, I really like the people up in Reno, and I like the city. I like the program up there, and so people are coming in from all the different programs around the United States, like Portland, Oregon, Portland, Maine, Las Vegas, Nevada, San Diego, California, Orange County, California, Riverside, California. Oh, let's see, Pensacola, Florida, lots of places. Not There aren't lots of programs, but they're cool people doing a great work, and so they'll be up there. We're going to gather up there uh, Friday morning through midday saturday then i'll be back so we're going to pre-record this show the next saturday they tell me that the auditor controller of sutter county nathan black is going to sit in for me here and uh if he doesn't if something happens where where he can't get here but i think that's a tentative plan uh he will uh if he doesn't come we'll have another plan for you but i'm going to be in vietnam on that saturday so this saturday i'm going to be coming back from reno the next saturday uh i'll be in vietnam but this saturday even though i'm on the road this will be the show you're listening to right now will be this saturday uh so you won't realize all this until it hits you on saturday so this is this is going to be good today and uh i hope you're doing well and i'm thankful that you're listening and if it's your first time and you don't like it, the cool thing about the United States right now is we, it, when it goes full-blown socialist, they'll just have one station, and that's what you'll listen to all over the United States. Right now, we have lots of stations, so you have choice. You have a choice to listen to me, and I have a choice to take your call. So I mentioned earlier, this is a recording, so calling in won't help you. The phone will be answered by an automated service. You could complain. You can give me an attaboy or I hate your guts. Either is fine with me. It's okay. Uh, but we won't be able to chat with you. And so you might, if you just wanted to give me a howdy or something or make a comment about something, it won't work when you're listening to this show. Got it? So um, we're, 
we let's see what else do i need to see say administratively i think we got everybody covered we're legal so i want to say that uh the only reason i'm doing this i was coming out of chili's today i got a, a gift card and i i've been eating at restaurants because i thought i may i may pass away in a couple of weeks and i don't want people i don't want to have any money on those gift cards right and and you can't like you can't like uh pass them on like well i guess you could pass them on like money but i thought i'm gonna instead of cooking i had a busy day so i was coming out of chili's and a guy was that's a lot older than me which is really old stopped me and said how much he appreciated what i was saying and writing so i told him the only reason i even fuss with this because otherwise i would just fly to vietnam and move over there and retire and just sit on the beach and drink great coffee and uh but the, but I'm concerned because my dad uh, had a plan for his life, and uh, life got in the way of what he wanted to do. He wanted to go to college and make something of himself. He came from a poor background, but he started to Yuba College, and, and uh, the war happened. And so he, first of all, he was working some, taking care of his mother, who his dad had died, and then he got called into the the war and you know nobody knew how long the war was going to last when the war started at world war ii i'm talking about so he joined the navy in 1941 and he stayed till the duration you know it wasn't one of those deals where you just serve a term or a couple of years like we did in vietnam uh you just say you just either lived or died we're either going to win this thing or we're going to be taken over by adolf hitler so he stayed to the end and spent a lot of time in the jungle and did his deal and uh so I didn't serve, but I, uh, I owe, owe a debt of gratitude to my father and his brother who did serve and all the other people who have served and all the people who died. And I have a concern for my grandkids uh, on, on what they're fa – they have no idea what's going to hit them. Uh, we have a full-blown socialist nation right now. And so I'm here uh, just talking for food and uh and wiki man's helping me today santos vigil so uh i want to say thanks to some of the people that helped me do this show uh one is that the is an odd relationship the church of glad tidings this isn't a religious show you'd think i'd have some kind of boring music come on and then i'd start preaching at you and be really boring and and you'd turn it off as fast as you could but the Church of Glad Tidings uh, raised some money to help buy the time for this show. But others help as well. And the uh, recently, the Sutter Buttes Tea Party Patriots contacted me, and they said, hey, Lou, we want to help you out. So will you promote some of our uh, operations out there? And, I, and uh, you know, actually, I used to do it for nothing. Uh, but I didn't do it every single week. But I tried to give them a push because I believe in – and their philosophy and, and what they're fighting for, what they're standing for. Same thing, same, same thing as me. So uh, the Sutter Buttes Tea Party Patriots uh, are fighting for the Constitution, which a lot of people don't think is necessary anymore. And they're fighting for a really small government, a limited government like the Founding Fathers. Not, not what we have in California, not what we have in Yuba County and Sutter County. Uh, they want really small government and get rid of all this stuff that's not even in the Constitution. They want fiscal responsibility. That's F-I-S-C-A-L. That means not spending money you don't have. And they want free markets where people like Kumar Kairam can sell a 16-ounce beer if he wants to, right? Uh, so the Tea Party patriots are informing anybody that will listen, the people that come to their meetings, and anybody that's in our community and even uh, public people like politicians of what their feelings are about different choices and decisions that are being made for our local citizens. You know, you may get unhappy with how things are going in your city, Yuba City, Marysville, Oroville, Chico, Calusa, right, Lincoln, Grass Valley, Nevada City, but unless you decide to do something, uh, you're just a legend in your own mind, and you're just circling the drain along with everything else in your life. You know, it's amazing. A lot of Americans, to me, 
They think that things are just going to go on like they used to be. And I want to tell you that Puerto Rico didn't used to be broke and now destroyed. They are hundreds of billions of dollar in debt. You know why? Because they chose socialism. And there's a reason why we're not Venezuela right at the moment. Venezuela, when I was going to school, we studied the South American countries. We had to study each country, what its gross national product was, their export products, their import products, uh, population, the basics of each country, Central and South America. And I remember to this day how strong and how democratic and how prosperous that Venezuela was. It was the most prosperous country in, in that continent. And, uh, and how, how they had the most, I couldn't believe how they had the most oil in the world. And they have all kinds of natural resources. Today, today they're eating their zoo animals. Today, uh, they are, uh, they are killing one another and they're eating, they're eating anything they can get their hand. They're robbing trucks on the way to drop off stuff at the store before it even gets there because there's no, the stores are bare. I want you to think about that. You think, oh, that could never happen here. Oh, come on. I can, you know, what happened in Port, what's happening in Puerto Rico could, could never happen here. We are part of Puerto Rico. Do you know that? It's a protectorate or whatever you want to call it. It's it. They want to be a state. Why? Because they're homeless. They want somebody to pick up their debt and all their problems. So the Tea Party Patriots is trying to get people to wake up. Come out of your slumber. Come out of your sleep. Straighten up. Wake up. Slap your face. Right? Jump in a cold shower and straighten up. Open your wallet and quit spending it on stupid stuff and donate some money to good candidates. So the Sutter Beach Tea Party Patriots, they meet the first and third Monday night of each month. Coming up, that's the 2nd and the 16th of October. And they meet out at Church of Glad Tidings. It's really easy to get to. Just bolt out the freeway out 99 from where the mall is there in Yuba City. It's about three minutes out. <clears throat> Go out Live Oak Boulevard either way. It's right in between Live Oak Boulevard and the freeway. <clears throat> and on Eager Road. And when you go in, it's just the first building on the left, building 200. Very easy to find. And they meet at 630. Doors open at 6. They have great speakers. Uh, and they're talking about current issues. They had both sheriffs out there recently giving an update on a lot of issues. So uh, they're the only group in town that's really having a lot of great speakers informing the public. So uh, check it out. Also out there, I want to mention that starting – uh, well, actually, it just started on Wednesday the 20th, is a is a 90-minute class. Uh, it's going to go on for the next few months uh, on the Constitution. And probably almost everyone I'm talking to, unless you went to law school or studied it in college purposely, you don't, you don't know your butt from a hole in the ground off, on the Constitution. In fact, uh, I think... I think we have a clip today that talks about the Constitution because I think this last week was Constitution Day. And uh, I think the statistics are like 47% of elected officials don't know anything about the Constitution. Hold that thought. And I was thinking, you know, if I had kids again that were <clears throat> elementary school, like 6th, 7th, 8th, or high school, I would, I would have them go to this class and give them a spiff at the end if they pulled it off. They would be the smartest kids in the high school or certainly the elementary school or the high school or early college. Nobody knows. These kids will know the Constitution if you send them this class. So it starts, uh, It actually, by the time you hear this show, you'll be in to dip into the second class, and it's at the uh, same place at Glad Tidings, but in Building 500, it's a two-story building with the green top on it, in room 210, 212, and it starts on it's Wednesdays at 6.30 to 8, not Mondays like the regular tea party. And uh, it's taught by some aces, and it's coordinated by Tammy Reichard. So you can, if you have any questions, you can call Tammy at 701-2845, 701-2845. And she will, like, dial you in. In fact, since it's recorded, you may be able to catch up with an old with an old uh, 
since you missed the first one already. You can get a book downloadable, or you can uh, uh, you can get a book for forty five dollars a manual. You can order it online, or you can you can download the thing at ten dollars, or you can uh, just go audit the course, right? And uh, but the, there's no charge for the course itself. You got it. You got the tea party stuff. We're ready to go. Thank you also to Dave Greenitz Construction, who does some of the most amazing bathroom and kitchen remodels i've ever seen every time he every time he shows one on the internet i think i'll always look around my kitchen and bath i think boy this place is looking pretty sorry over here so anyway dave green it's construction and also uh the plumbing doctor doctor who is run by ted holmes and they all every time i notice something flowing the wrong way in my house i call the plumbing doctor or if i smell something i call like the other day i got a little whiff of natural gas i thought i'm calling the plumbing doctor get him over here and light a flame or fix that thing before I blow myself up. They'll say, what happened to him? Say, well, he had the gas all fouled up. We're coming right back. We're going to take a break here. Are we ready? Ready, Chief? We're going to take a break here and uh, hang with us. We got two and a half hour. I'm Kelsey, a student at Hillsdale College. Here is Dr. Larry Arn on how America's founders understood the words, all men are created equal. America's founders knew, obviously, that human beings are not equal in terms of strength or beauty or in terms of intelligence, industry, or talents. They understood that because of such differences, differences in talents and things like that, some people will be wealthier than others. But human beings are equal, the founders believe, in their possession of natural rights such as the rights to life, liberty, and property. Today, many Americans reject this equality of rights in order to pursue equality of condition through redistribution or spreading the wealth around to use a famous formulation. This is destructive of liberty as the founders understood it. This Constitution Minute was brought to you by Hillsdale College. To join the national conversation on the Constitution, go to constitutionminute.org. On September 17th, we celebrate Constitution Day, the day when these 39 individuals signed the document that is the Constitution of the United States. Now, saying we celebrate the Constitution, today a lot of people don't really celebrate the Constitution because they don't like the Constitution and, and, and they don't want to do anything, have anything to do with the Constitution because these guys were terrible and the Constitution's terrible and we're going a different direction but probably just because they don't know much about the Constitution that they have those positions and opinions. Yeah, that, that really is true. We don't know much about the Constitution Day, even by polling. Polling shows that 48% of elected officials can't even name the three branches of government, and that's our elected officials. But that was not a problem we had in previous generations because we studied the Constitution from a very early start, and we're supposed to today. I mean, federal law still says on Constitution Day, every public school is a set-aside time to cover the Constitution. 90% of schools don't do that. It's interesting that, yeah, in schools we're supposed to learn about the Constitution, and today most people have no idea about any of the sections or clauses in the Constitution. But as you mentioned, early education used to be different. This is an early education textbook. In fact, this is an elementary Constitution textbook. Now, most high school students don't study the Constitution, but this was elementary. And by the way, I would even point out that most adults probably couldn't answer these elementary questions. So, so, so what year is that? This is an 1828 so elementary school textbook. Elementary in 1828, we're studying the Constitution. So here's some of the questions. May members of Congress be arrested, that is seized by a sheriff or constable, for debts they owe while they are attending to their public duty. Now, I, I would like to see how many Supreme Court justices could answer that. Well, what's interesting is, so, so the answer, it says, is the answer is no, unless they meet one of the three exceptions. So the next question is, what are the three exceptions to this case? And then the answer is, if they've been guilty of treason, a felony, or a breach of peace. Then it says, well, when is a person guilty of treason? The next question is, if members of Congress, while engaged in debate, that is, in arguing about any law that is proposed to be made, shall say anything offensive to a member, may he be sued for it by any other in a court of law. That's elementary stuff. This is what they were doing in elementary school. And the Constitution's not that. Seven articles, takes about 20 minutes to read it but we were going through that in elementary school. And actually, you know what? If you want to have this little elementary catechism challenge, why don't you look on the link today and see if you can pass this elementary catechism on the Constitution. Welcome back. You're listening to Live with Lou. A working man can't get nowhere today. The reason? Government is taking all their money from them. That's the reason. 
So uh, we were talking uh, as I closed this last sec- segment about the Constitution class at Church of Glad Tidings. Another place you can learn about the Constitution is from a lady that I have great respect for. I've met her personally. She's spoken at the church I attend a number of times, Chris Ann Hall. Uh, she got kicked to the curb when she was working as a government attorney down in Florida because she kept asking questions like why they weren't following the Constitution, and she started affiliating with the Tea Party, and they asked her to leave. So now she spends her time teaching people about the Constitution all over the United States. She's a big Tea Party hero, Chris Ann Hall with a K. So you can look her up on the Internet at Chris, K-R-I-S, and A-N-N-E, Hall, common spelling, H-A-L-L.com. You can, like, tap into her courses as well. And so uh, I was listening. You know, I played two clips by her last week about the, the Second Amendment. And you know something? If our founding fathers were alive today, they would kick Jerry Brown's ass and run him out of office and take over the legislature and tell them to just find a place to live somewhere. Same way with a lot of these eunuchs. I call them eunuchs. Do you know what a eunuch is? I, I didn't know what a eunuch was till I read the Bible. That's somebody, that's a guy who had his spaldings cut off. Did you know that? Now, that, that distri- description fits most male politicians I know. They ain't got any. You understand what I'm saying? And so Chris Ann Hall, like she shakes it down to where it counts, and she just explained it to everybody that the founding fathers, not some esoteric group, but the main dudes that put the put the words on the paper, said, teach your kids how to shoot because you may have to shoot a legislator, basically. I want you to think about that. I, I didn't come up with that. I'm just telling you what our founding father said. Everybody get something to shoot with and make sure your kids know how to use it because you're probably going to have to take over the government, the government they created. Hold that thought. So Chris Ann call, Hall. So I wanted to talk about a cool thing that happened that uh, I went out last night to the strip club down the street. And, and uh, <laughs> that's the... Um, City lights. What do they call it? The city. I got to get this right. I get the name right. Anyway, we call it the strip club or the gentleman's club or whatever you want to call it. But um, I'm going to look up the, the right name. City. Sorry, it's not city lights. It's city limit showgirls. That's the name of it. City limit showgirls. And uh, I, I got attracted to them because uh, I read on the Internet that, that they were going to have a fundraiser to raise money for the families of the two deputies that got shot. You know, the, 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 the government will pay for the, sh- the medical costs, right, of the deputies, and they'll be on some sort of a subsistence salary, workers' comp or whatever, but... There's a lot of extra costs, like when you're unemployed and you're having medical appointments, you're driving back and forth. And there's been a number of fundraisers. I think the Dutch Boys Coffee up in Live Oak did a big one, and was and then there was a pizza one. Well, the girls and uh, the manager at at uh, Dargana, what's the name of that place again? City Limits, City Limits Showgirls. It just changed hands about a year ago. And so I got interested in it, and I thought, how do I get a hold of those guys? And so I've had a hard time going on the Internet, finding current numbers. So I just thought, I'm, I'm, late last night, I thought, I want a taco. So I thought, I'm going to go over to Antonio's Tacos out at Feather River Boulevard because they got the good ones. And uh, they're not too far from my house. Out, I'm in Marysville, but I'm just over the bridge. So I thought, I'm going to swing out at the showgirls' place, and then I'm going to talk to them. If there's, I figure they're there at night, right? I think that's where they do the dancing. I'm just, I'm learning about this. And so I thought I'm going to go there and have a, I'm going to interview the manager, whoever's there. And then I'm going to go get me some tacos. So, (laughs) so anyway, sure enough, man, it was, God was with me because I found the manager right away and a great guy. And, uh, anyway, his name's Hal Meyer. So you can give a shout out to Hal and Hal, uh, 
he was very kind to me. And so I was in the bar and he says, Hey, yeah. He said, I'll talk to you. He said, have a seat. So we sat down and we had a chat and he told me, uh, that they raised $2,565 on a car wash, uh, that lasted from 11 o'clock. I think it was going to go 11 till five, but there was so many cars lined up. Now these gals were washing cars topless. Now, I don't know whether that have any impact. I know I watch car. We we do car washes at the church. I don't think we get this much kind of activity, but they, they, their license, I didn't realize this, but their license, they can do, dance topless anywhere on that property. As long as you can't see it from the street. So they, they rigged up a, um, a canopy area, a tent area where you would drive through and blacked it off. Right. So the pedestrians couldn't see going down the street. So anyway, the place was jammed. They advertised it on all. They said they had the LA times wrote an article, the Sacramento B KCRA, lots of people wrote articles. They bought an ad in the territorial dispatch. I don't know about the appeal Democrat. That's a lot. They, they're a lot more generous than the Republicans are. They always want you to do something for nothing, but they spent some money and, um, uh, they said, Lou, the cars were just lined up. They said they even had people that were driving down the highway that heard about it, thought, we're going to go over there. <laughs> they pulled off the highway. They're on their way like up north and went over there and got their cars uh, cleaned by these uh, ladies uh, that had some clothes on, but not all the important parts were covered. So anyway, uh, but the cool thing was for me, uh, I said, well, Hal, of all the things you could do with your life, what got into you? I mean, there's lots of things to do good, do good works. I mean, and he said, Lou, he said, we are, we, we love the police. We love law enforcement. And he said, that they've been always very respectful and good and helpful to us out here. He said, I've been here a year and, uh, we got a great relationship with them and, and we, we appreciate the work they do in the community. And I said, have you always felt that way? And Hal said, you know, Lou, uh, and we stepped outside because he didn't want to talk in front of anybody else, but we're now we're going to talk in front of all of them. Uh, he says, when I was a youngster down in orange County, I was actually an explorer for the orange County Sheriff's department. And he said, I used to, uh, help with the Harbor patrol and stuff. And he said, I, I always had great relationships with law enforcement and I, I really understand the mission. And he said, I used to date when I was in high school, I used to date the daughters of, uh, law enforcement officials down there. So I just had law enforcement all around me. So I've grown up with appreciation of law enforcement. So anyway, I just was really, um, appreciative of, I mean, they could, they could have just skipped it, right. Done nothing. And any, any of you that took pot shots at them, like, well, this is just a publicity stunt. I, I said, Hey, I asked him about, it. I said, Hal, wh what about this? Some people called it a publicity son. He said, Lou, honestly, man, he said, uh, we, we appreciate law enforcement. They do a good job. We can't, we can't live without them. Right. And, um, in fact, the uh, article KCRA wrote or SAC B wrote, it said the club's management says it's just trying to do, to be good citizens in our community. You know something, everybody ought to pay attention to this. The club's management said it's just trying to be a good citizen. I want you to think about what that looks like in your life to be a good citizen. Just keeping your fist off the neighbor's nose is not, that, that isn't good enough. That's what's wrong with our country is why you just sat home and thought, well, I'm not causing any problems. That ain't good enough. You know, our founding fathers uh, thought that they needed to invest personal time and money if they wanted to see the school district flourish or the keep the local school teacher on track or make sure that a bridge got built or whatever, whatever they had. It, they just couldn't do their drink, their little beer when they got home and watch TV, uh, and think everything's going to be fine out there. Right. So, um, anyhow, they, uh, these gals, they had up to 15 ladies out there washing cars. They washed cars till six o'clock. Then they went home freshened up, came back and danced from eight to three in the morning. Now, if you're just like, 
what and they didn't get paid for it by the way they donated their time now how many of you volunteer how many of you volunteer out in the heat from 11 to 6 and then go home shower up uh get your get your war paint on and then go back to dance for eight to three in the morning so the next time you want to like do cheap shots uh hold that thought and the other thing for all of you folks out there that got something negative about the showgirls, uh, I know some of those gals because I met them in Yuba County Jail. Not necessarily those exact ones but that were out there, but I've met showgirls, and I've talked to them, dancers, and I've talked to them. I said, what's up? She they said, Lou, I, I, I don't have a lot of skills. Uh, I never grad, I don't have a, you know, a degree, and I got two kids and no income, no child support and i can make a lot of money two three days and you may not agree with that but at least they're not on welfare dude hold that thought so uh hal says in the paper here sack b said i know we're not the ideal business for a fundraiser but we feel it's our civic responsibility to help in any way we can you know it's too darn bad that more citizens didn't feel that way instead of like having an attitude towards the cops this guy says these I'm reading right out of the uh, B these officers put their lives on the line to protect everything dear to us. I'm telling you, I know that to be a fact because I've ridden with them for thousands of hours. Uh, one user that the, the, the B said one uh, person on social media wrote, he's not coming because it's for the cops. What a dog. The car wash organizers then pushed back and said nothing but respect and love for law enforcement. They put their lives on the line to protect children and homes. The club stated on its uh, webpage, I guess. So uh, anyway, I was talking to Rosa Leon, who's one of the star uh, workers over there at Yuba County. I mean star in two ways. She, she runs the star program, but she's also a star in my book. She's a wonderful lady and a, and a top notch government employee works her rear off. And so she was kind of the point person. And <clears throat> she said that the deputies are doing much better and healing up and, and there's been quite a bit of money. She didn't share it with how much money. I don't think it was public, but, uh, anyway, you can still donate to them. If you want, you could, you can send money to the deputy sheriff's association for the deputies, uh, fund. And, uh, to the Sierra Central Credit Union at seven, uh, or, or to Sierra Central Credit Union of Marysville, or you can send it through Rosa Leon L E O N at seven twenty Yuba Street, Marysville, and uh, she'll she'll get it to him. So that's that. I thought that was pretty cool, and uh, I uh, I'm happy that the the guys are are doing better, and and uh, and I just enjoyed my visit to the uh, city limits showgirls operation uh so i wanted to mention now about um we i wrote an article it came out this week this last week on tuesday in the territorial dispatch if you didn't get one you you can snoop around at stores or you can do the easy way which i do i go on the internet at territorial dispatch one word dot b-i-z biz and then just click on when your home page comes up, click on current issue. And on the front page is an article that the supervisors are raising their pay 61.9% plus they wanted to give themselves a, a boost from a hundred dollar car allowance to almost $500. How about that? How many of you out there working for pg e or Tykert construction or, Oh, I don't know the plumbing doctor or Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot. How many of you just decide at the end of the week, I think I'm worth a lot of money and I'm going to write myself a raise. I'm going to vote myself a raise. Damn it. I'm tired of working for this amount of money. I'm going to vote myself a raise because I'm, I'm very valuable and what would Home Depot and Lowe's and all these people do without me? I'm indispensable. If you just think about it, whether you think we've lived here for millions of years or just six or pro, approximately 6,000, like the biblical way, 
you should figure out by thinking that through that you're not indispensable. Hold that thought because a lot of, a lot of people have been dispensed with since the beginning. But our supervisors is something that happens when people get elected to office and then they walk into a room like a dinner and people stop and they say, oh, well, there's supervisor so-and-so or let's clap for supervisor so-and-so. And I thought, why? Why not clap for the nurse, <laughs> right? They just saved a life. Supervisors don't save any lives. Or there's Assemblyman Gallagher. Why, why would we clap for him? Why don't we clap for, I don't know, a construction worker who just fixed the pipeline over on Stabler Avenue after some dude cut it in half, right? Why don't we clap for everybody? Why do we always have to do that? It just seems so nonsensical. But these supervisors, um, he, here's the way the government is working right now. They always talk about transparency. You know, it's kind of when, when people keep, like when anybody ever says to me how honest they are, that, that's a bad sign right there. I'm really honest because probably they are saying that because they got an honesty problem. So when people in government say, by God, we're transparent, we're, we're like one of the mission statements I noticed with uh, Scott Mitnick is we're going to have transparency. Well, I know right then he's not in favor of transparency. In fact, his office is is littered with secrecy and bullying. And so recently, people have been finding out things through the grapevine or leaks, which he is going to stop. The Fuhrer over at Sutter County, just like Jana McClung, when she realized that, that I was writing articles in the territorial about stuff going on in our office, she said, I don't know who's leaking stuff to Lou Benninger, but it's going to stop and I'm going to get them. Just bullies, right? Why would you, if government's so transparent, what are you trying to hide all the time? Why do you have to sneak through a pay raise? Why do you have to sneak through a homeless camp like 14 forward to destroy a whole neighborhood? It's interesting, you know. Bob Bendorf doesn't, doesn't live there. I don't even know whether he lives. Does he even live in the county? I don't even think he lives in the county. Mitnick's family's down. I don't supervise supervisor all in Sutter County are all touchy. Oh yeah. Scott Mitnick. No, 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 no. He lives right here. Oh yeah. He lives right over here. Yeah. But his all his people live in Ventura County. But Mitnick sneak just like they did 14 forward. No permits. No public forums, no asking the public's input. 14 forward, no sewage, no running water. We'll just like throw up a porta potty. You ever try to throw up a porta potty and without a permit or something? Oh, well, <laughs> we can put up these little tool sheds and have people live in them. And uh, no lights, no air conditioning, just like. Oh, this, this, anything, you know, it's amazing when government wants to do things, laws, ordinances, oh, to hell with them. Just push them right off to the right side, left side. We, we don't need, yeah, to hell with that. We don't need to do that. No, we're not, we're not going to obey the law. Come on, man. We're the government. We're the government. I got to obey the law. That's for you little people. You got to obey the law. We put people in uniforms and cars just to follow you all around and send people with little tablets under their arm, little little Nazi boys and girls running around, peeking over your shoulder to see whether you're doing this right or your sign's correct or you you, you got too much signage in your window. or Oh, you, no, you can sell a 24-ounce beer. You can't sell a 16-ounce beer. Or, oh, no, you can't do that that way, but you have to apply for a new permit to fill that little bottle of something. And then you got to give us some more money, and then we'll give you another little piece of paper to God bless you so you can sell that little drink, right? What nonsense. What deception. What criminality. What corruption. You know the amazing thing to me? You talk to supervisors, they are shocked when you bring up things like this. They are so used to sitting in a sewer pond, it's smelling good to them over there, right? Do you know that? You ever drive down I-5? And when I, I haven't driven down there, we used to drive to Mexico to work 
in Otay Mesa site of Tijuana. We were building an orphanage. So we would, a lot of us would go down I-5, and I'd be just thinking about nothing, just musing because I was not driving. I was just using driving shot, riding shotgun, and all of a sudden there'd be this strong odor, like, whoa. And then pretty soon the Harris Ranch would show up. It's a Harris Ranch feedlot. Remember that? Is it still there, Santos? I don't know. And for a couple of miles, that feedlot, would be really right up in your business but you know something people that work there don't even smell that and that's how it is in politics they do some things if you knew about them make your hand hair stand right on your end fact right on its end in fact they'd put you in jail for it do you know that you know that right i mean you know that hillary clinton if you did one one thousandth of what the Clintons have done. You'd go to jail for your life. You kidding me? Guys, I was just reading about Michael Peavy, who resigned as head of the CPUC here a few years ago. That guy was so corrupt. You think he went to jail? No, no, no. They threw him parties at the end. You see Berkeley threw it was threw him a party. You see Berkeley because he'd always been chipping money to them, right? The guy was totally corrupt. Do you remember those pipelines blew up in San Bruno? That was Michael Peavy's doing over there. Eight people died, 50, 60 houses burned up, blew up the whole city. Michael Peavy didn't do his job. Oh, well, government's not accountable. Nobody's accountable. You promote them. You screw up in government, you get a promotion. You're a, you're a dead weight. You're a paperweight. So Mitnick, he's trying to chase down all the leads, right? Because he's a control freak, just like he was down there in, in Thousand Oaks, calling up all those businesses that did big business, big multi-million dollar businesses, calling those executives up. Hey, you know, you're doing all this business with us. And he said, my boy's in the baseball team over at XYZ High. And we're doing a fundraiser, and we sure could use your support. On He's doing that on company time. Twisting arms to support his kids when he's making 300 grand a year. His own. You know, it's amazing why people can't support their own kids. They just don't take care of their own kids' business. They want you and I to support them, and they're cashing in. I noticed the other day that the head of human services at Yuba County was making over a quarter of a million dollars not in her lifetime, in in one year, with all the vacation time and sick time, oh, and special meetings and going to in-services and getaways. and Is she, nothing personal with her, I don't know the woman, she's probably the nicest person in the world. She could be like Mother Teresa. Is she worth it? Is she worth half that? I'm, you know, so, so all of a sudden at this health, we get this, I get this, uh, suggestion that there's going to be this health and welfare ad hoc committee meeting with Ron Sullinger and, uh, Dan Flores are going to be, they're the ad hoc committee, two of the five supervisors, and they're going to discuss it. They're going to have an agenda on, on a Tuesday morning, I think it is, or maybe it was Monday morning. Anyway, so I wrote an article about it and how they were going to raise their pay, uh, I don't know, 20 grand a year, 62% increase rounded up. To get it up there around eighty-eight thousand four hundred fifty-six dollars, I thought, you know something. I wonder what people thought when they actually served because it was the right thing to do, and didn't expect anything in return, and felt, hey, I'm serving because I want the community to be run well, and make sure everything's everything works out right. And now these guys think this is a career did you know that the supervisors get a, a retirement you know a lot of these supervisors are retired already and or 
uh, many of them are still working and have full-time jobs or own a business. And then we go and pay them a retirement. Do you, do you know why we do that? Because we didn't have any say in it because they can vote themselves retirement raises. They could give themselves brand new cars every year. They can do whatever they darn well, please. Did you know that you have no say in it? You, in, in other words, you don't, you can go down and have a say. And if enough of you have, I told a guy on the, uh, today, he was complaining about something. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. And he, he was saying, I don't know what to do. I'll tell you. I said, I know what to do. I said, well, what we're going to get in Sutter County and Yuba County is exactly what we're willing to fight for. And I said, if you don't go over and kick some ass, you're going to end up with a really screwed up mess here, bud. And that, I live in Yuba County. We got issues over here. He lives in Sutter. We're going to come back in a second. We're, we're going to do two more hours of this if you're fed up. I don't know. I can't. I don't. There's hundreds and thousands of stations you can tune into. Alzira even is a pretty cool station. That's that Arab uh, terrorist station. Check it out, uh, or come back and listen to us. We'll keep talking about the same stuff. You're listening to the station that's been owned and operated by your friends and neighbors for over 72 years. The Big Fourteen. Five in a row. Come on, baby. Let's go. Number one then. And number one in local talk now. Hey, this is Live with Lou broadcasting high atop Mount Hoot. KMYC, 1410 AM, Marysville, Yuba City. We are going to follow the money. So we have new details now. We're learning about special treatment for big donors. Follow the money. Big money and the access it buys. Follow the money. A price for everything. Follow the money. One email describes the price of a private dinner with Hillary Clinton. $200,000. Follow the money. Well, concerns are surfacing over new reports about the Clinton Foundation and the cash that it has accepted. Follow the money. Specifically from overseas. And a couple of these countries support terrorism. She's on record as saying they support terrorism. Follow the money. I just don't get it. That's where the money is. And we are going to follow the money. Welcome back. You're listening to Lou Benninger. This is Live with Lou. I'm here with Santos Vigil, the Wiki Man. And we were talking here in the last hour. Uh, let me give you a little preface to this because this is a little different today. If you just tuned in and you didn't hear my opening, I wanted to just remind you that that even though we're we're normally live live where you can dial up and talk to somebody here and get on the air if you wish or if we'd let you it's pro choice here you know so if we if you're not convenient we would abort you anyway but uh we we are recording this a couple nights earlier because I got to be up in Reno and uh, so this is fresh stuff but it's just recorded so if you call in you'll get the answering machine don't get all stirred up about it so I was talking before we went to the commercial about the fact that some Sutter County residents discovered by accident or leak or through the grapevine, I don't know how, because it wasn't published yet, that that this earlier this week that there was going to be an ad hoc committee of the Board of Supervisors of Sutter County to entertain. It was They were going to cover a number of things. as a health and welfare or health and something, something community uh, committee. And they were going to discuss one thing, uh, a 61.7% increase to the salaries of the Board of Supervisors, and they were going to uh, look at an increase also of their gas allowance, which currently is 100, is going to go up to possibly 500 or close to 500. So uh, what happened was that a number of citizens from Sutter County went to the meeting. And they were, uh, I, I think it was Tuesday. So they actually took copies of the territorial dispatch, which I had done my best to describe uh, what the supervisors wanted to do and uh, whether it was justified or not. Now, let me tell you how uh, supervisors, and, uh, and they're just like unions. So let me just tell you how this works, because I was chaplain for the fire department for years, and I love the fire department. I love the cops. I like them, but I don't agree with the whole union thing. So basically how the union thing works is, say the Yuba City firefighters, uh, they they get a lot of money for what they do, 
And but the Roseville firefighters, they get a lot more or a, another community gets a lot more just down the road. And so when they go into negotiations with the city, they say, well, hey, they compare themselves to people down the road. Now, you know, it's interesting because you remember that thing. If you went to your mother and you said, well, you know, I'll, I want to go to the movies Friday night. She said, no, I don't want you to go Friday night. Well, Johnny's going. And so then she says, what'd she say? She said, well, Johnny, Johnny ran off the end of a cliff. Would you go too? Right. But, but isn't that interesting? The same things, the same tendencies we have. And so our justification is Johnny's getting to go. His mom don't have any problem. He's got homework. He's got this. He's got that. He, in fact, he got in trouble at school. He's getting to go to the movies. How come I can't go to the movies? Well, I don't want you to go. So these supervisors use the same logic. So Mitnick, the, the new county administrator, they got canned down Thousand Oaks and also got the professional the professional panel that interviewed Mitnick up here gave him a thumbs down, but that was the blessing of God for the supervisors because they went right away right away and hired him and thought they, they found a gold nugget in the middle of uh, Bridge Street. And so uh, anyway, uh, we are uh, we get in a situation where Mr. Mitnick is pitching this increase in salaries this last tuesday and the uh, a group of residents went and had an issue with it and the newspaper came out and now you can read it online at territorialdispatch.biz and you can read the whole story and they use the argument well hey yuba county gets a lot paid a lot more well my argument in the newspaper was since yuba county supervisors are stealing from the poor does that is that give you a right to steal from the poor in 2007 the supervisors who had one hand in the till in yuba county put the second hand in the till and boosted their pay at almost double and uh and with their yuba county uh, water agency money yuba county supervisors are making about ninety thousand dollars you know you, th you think they have office hours every day do you think they meet once a week they only meet twice a, twice a month right the tea party meets as much the Tea Party has got more time in meetings each month than the Board of Supervisors does. Sutter Butte's Tea Party Patriots. And these guys are making $90,000 $90, a year over there in Yuba County. So the Sutter County guys said, hey, Mom, Yuba County is getting 90000 Why can't we have it? Right? So anyway, uh, supposedly, uh supervisor whitaker i don't know whether he's still chairman of the board or not but i heard a few days before this when the word got out and it got out on facebook and people started saying hey the supervisors are going to try to raise their pay and you know who they have to convince to raise their pay just three out of the five got to vote on it vote for it right they don't care what you think you think they're going to take a poll do you think they're going to take a vote of the public no way you're too stupid you're too stupid. You don't know what's going on. They talk about wanting you at the meetings, but they really don't want you there. They want you to stay home because they can do whatever they darn well please. They hide everything they can do. They'll slip it through on a consent agenda. That was the scary thing. People thought, hey, if they meet at this ad hoc committee, they'll slip it through on a consent agenda. You know what the consent agenda is? It's a list of a bunch of stuff that they once they do the opening prayer, amen, thank you, Jesus, do the Pledge of Allegiance, then they say, how many are for that consent agenda? They don't even discuss it. And they just take a vote, right? And you can you could vote on switching Coke to Pepsi, and you wouldn't even know it because it's on the consent agenda. You think they'd do that? I guarantee it. So earlier in the week, uh, Jim Whitaker was asked about, hey, we heard he said, ah, oh, no, 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 That all got pulled. Well, it didn't get pulled. It's on the agenda of both meetings. The first meeting, uh, which was, I guess it was yesterday, the 19th. Man, so much happened in 24 hours, I feel like I had a birthday. Uh, so they had a meeting on the 19th, and then the final meeting where you put the pedal to the metal and, and vote that thing in is on the 26th. So Whitaker told the person, well, uh, it's, it's all pulled. Don't worry about it. It's, no, it's nothing. Well, the fact is, it ain't pulled. It didn't get pulled. It's still there. And so then after the meeting yesterday, 
with Mr. Uh, Flores and Mr. Sollinger. The question came, because, you know, if you read, you can read this on the uh, agendas on the Board of Supervisors website. And, you know, when, when they're discussing an issue like this, the staff of the county administrator does some research and researches the pros and cons of the increase and then whether the staff recommends it, recommends against it, or stays neutral. In this case, they made a really strong argument for it, no real argument against it, but then finally said, you ought to do this, right? It, it looks like it's Mitnick that does it. But it turns out the supervisor said that Mr. Whitaker was the one who was behind it all along and started the whole thing. Now, isn't that we're talking this morning about transparency, right? We're talking about transparency. That means being honest. That means, you know, it's kind of like I was talking to, uh, I was talking to Dave Bryan out at Church of Glad Tidings today. I was out there, had to drop off some stuff, get some stuff, do some business because they helped me in them, all my little projects around town. And so we were talking about a situation happening in Yuba Sutter, political. And I said, the question is, are we getting to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? You know, a lot of times people tell you what they want you to hear. They'll tell you certain, certain sit parts of a situation that are true, but that ain't the whole truth. That ain't the other side. That isn't everything about it. So when Mr. Whitaker said, oh, no, that's being pulled, and then we turn out he seemed like all estranged from it, aloof, like he didn't have anything to do with it. But he was really behind it all along, according to the other supervisors. Now, the last time I got into a deal like that with Jim Whitaker, he called me up and got all mad at me and said, you should have called me first, and that ain't the way it went. And I said, well, you may not think so, but your buddy supervisors think that's exactly what you did. So I, I, I'm not going to argue with you about what was in your mind because I'm not in your mind. I'm in my mind. But when the supervisors say that you did it, I'm just accepting that they're not lying to me. It's hard to figure out who's lying anymore. Are you, are you with me? It seems like humans ought to have a light on their head, and if they're lying, it goes out of one color, and they're telling the truth, it tells another color because people are hard to read today. Is that right? Politicians are hard to read. They think, my God, we're going to pull up Obamacare root and branch. And you hear that for eight years. And then when... Then we have all Republicans everywhere. Everybody wants Obamacare. Now, this is hard to figure out. Now, I was wanting to give that boy the benefit of the doubt and say, I love you and everything, and I believe you. And when we, Republican president, or sort of, Republican congressman, Republican Senate, but everybody seemed to love Obamacare. Huh. I can't figure it out. So anyway... We'll see. For you in Sutter County that are up in the air, people are stopping me on the street saying, hey, Lou, I heard that the, the supervisors are going to raise their pay over $20,000 a year. Hold that thought and go to the meeting on the 26th because they're liable to sneak it through on you, dude. All they need is three people to agree. Got guys like Bob Harlan used to run K, KUBA. He's too trusting, right? I don't trust rattlesnakes. They'll bite you when you're not looking, right? I'm in favor of the Air Force motto, in God we trust, all else, all others we monitor, right? All others we monitor. Or inspect what you expect. Too many people have been hoping for the best and getting the worst. If you feel like a bad pain in your backside, that would be the supervisors screwing you. You get that? Raising their pensions 25 or 30 percent, giving retroactively retroactive raises. This is a deal. This is a cool deal. Read my article, territorialdispatch.biz. This is an interesting perspective. How many of you out there get a salary, and then when you put in money in the bank to save for your future when you can't work anymore? When you put money away to save, you consider that a reduction in your salary. Does that sound stupid to you? Say you're working 
for a plumbing doctor or Dave Greenis Construction, and you get paid, and then you put a few hundred dollars a month away because someday you're not going to be able to work, but you then you complain to Dave Greenitz or Ted Holmes that you that that reduced your salary. Do you think they would make that would make sense to them? I think they'd think you. I think you need to take a drug test. <laughs> So Scott Mitnick, this is your CAO, the highest paid in Ventura County that came up here and was hired and then negotiated his salary. This is amazing, man. Actually said in this document, you can read all about it on the Sutter County website, that these poor supervisors back in like 2011 or 12, they had to pay six percent or six and a half percent of their own pensions oh my god i when i read it i started to shake and my liver my lip quivered and tears started to come out i had to go get a hanky i i i thought i need to call dr brar my heart doctor and come right in and see if he checked my blood pressure and see if i i'm still okay or take maybe take a bayer aspirin and then Mitnick went on to say the poor guys had to pay 6% of their own pensions. Like, I can't believe it, man. Like, 6% and everything. Like, of their own pension. So, actually, he says, that was actually a 6% salary reduction. We took money away from them to put it into their own pension. How dare we do that? But by God, you know, it was a sacrifice. We had to get a designated driver to take them home because they couldn't hardly see to dry. They were so shaken by the loss. Read it for yourself. You can't make this stuff up. This is unbelievable. This is so easy. It's just, uh, I don't know whether that's a disconnect for you. I have never worked for government. But honestly, I am thankful. I, I haven't done heroin. About the same to me. Working for government or heroin, it twists your brain. It tweaks your brain. You think tweakers walking up and down Live Oak Boulevard back and forth with mental health are strange, talking to people up in the air that aren't there, shaking their fist at people? Working for government is something. It will twist you. You talk about welfare babes it getting $650 a month, have a sense of entitlement? Go talk to people like Mitnick. Go talk to people like the county council. Go talk to people that are using the county cars to run personal errands. Go talk to people that, like I, I use the example in my newspaper article, if, if me having to pay 6% of my own retirement is lowering my salary, then me buying a cup of coffee is lowering my salary as well. Honestly, people, at some point, if it smells like manure, it's probably getting shoveled over your face. And that's what these people are dishing. Now, I got a call today from a guy. He called the Territorial Dispatch. And he sent a letter. And, and honestly, people, when, when the government does stealth stuff, you know that they know that they got a bad, they got something bad going on. You know, one time we bought a bunch of marijuana out of San Francisco. We bought a bunch. I, I don't know whether we bought a thousand pounds. We bought a bunch. I can't remember now, but it had fallen off a ship into the bay and, and it got water on it. Right. And then it got some mildew in it. So when you smoked it, you, it got you high, but it had a little flavor of mildew to it. Just a little tenth of mildew. So you know having to, you know that saying, are you smoking what you're selling? Or are you smoking some special stuff, right? Right? So the supervisors, are they selling us what they're smoking, right? So we had to really be some good salesmen to sell that batch of marijuana because we said, well, you know, it went in the bay, but it's, it, it'll, it's powerful stuff, dude. But it's got a little bit of mildew smell. But we'll make you a good deal on it, right? So when the government 
Does a stealth deal like 14 forward? Oh, they can sell it like they can say, hey, that hog, that look at that hog down there in that sawdust at 4-H down there at the fairgrounds. That hog is looking good, all like smooth and clean. You can't, that hog smells like he got cologne on. That hog's looking good. That hog, if you let him off in the farm, he'll come want to sleep inside with you. He won't even want to go to that hall, that waller down there and, and eat some of his manure and see if there's anything left over in there from the last meal. That's the way government does. They're sneaky like that. They say, oh, can't you smell that cologne? That's not a hog. That's not a hog that'd go down there and eat his own manure. That that's a 14 forward that like, we're going to change the world over there in that Bendorf zoo. And we're going to now we're, so I get a call on that. Now they want to replicate Bendorf zoo down on second street down there by Whitaker hall. And, uh, so, you know, that's the airport over there, right? We went through this airport thing a while back when again, there was stealth. It was a stealth thing going on over there. Sutter County where they were going to run the uh twin cities rod and gun club out of there after they'd been there i probably longer than most of those employees been living and we started raising a big stink about it. oh well you can't have you can't have gun places next to the airport but then we found out oh they got one over in yuba county they go on here they got one there and as long as it's managed properly you can have them Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. Well, it was done, wasn't done wrong. Then we found out that the county itself had built a welfare program, a, a, a department over there, and never paid. We found the county wasn't even following the FAA rules and the laws themselves and was ripping off the airport authority. Huh. Well, now you would think that around an airport, you want it to be really safe, right? That's why the the rod and gun club is under strict supervision from the uh the nra and all kinds of people so they it wouldn't conflict with airplanes taking off and landing so now but they want to put a homeless camp down there and lately all kinds of things been coming up missing already because there's already non-permitted camps but the the government is They'll enforce the law on you and me, but on a homeless person, they're now exempt from the law where they're living. They can squat wherever they want. That's why I got to be careful when I leave to go to Vietnam or something. I got to have somebody watching my house. I'll come back and they'll be like, they'll be like cooking beans and rice in there and having a, having the TV turned on and everything and burning some patchouli and smoking the weed in there. And so down at, I got a, I got a, a, a heads up that uh that the the airport you know the airport a few years ago was so poorly run by the supervisors they just ran it in debt and they were digging into the general fund to fund that thing every year because they couldn't manage it most things you know did you know that the post office was run by a committee of congressmen <laughs> no wonder it's amazing the guy shows up at your door once a day with the mail right it's a miracle of god actually and so i'm going to read you we're going to come up to a break here but the sutter uh aviation operation wrote a letter to its members throwing a fit about this stealth hit that they're going to put homeless camps all along the airport so uh you ready to go so we're gonna we're gonna take a break here and we're coming right back for another half a show i think i think we've got an hour and a half yet left of my counting is correct we'll be right back in 2012 my promotional printing company hands-on originals was approached by a customer to print a message that conflicted with my conscience when i said no they sued me my name is blaine adamson I got into the t-shirt printing business because I wanted to create Christian shirts that people would want to wear. Christian t-shirts at the time were so bad, they were so cheesy. For all the years that I've been running my business, Hands On Originals, I've happily served and employed people of all backgrounds, of all walks of life. 
That's why I was hired in 2012 when a customer sued us after I politely declined to make t-shirts promoting the local Pride Festival. I was surprised because I work with and I serve gay people. But I can't print any message that goes against my faith, no matter who asks me to print it. And whenever I can't print something, I always offer them to another local print shop, as is the custom for t-shirt makers of all kinds. I've declined plenty of orders in the past. For example, I was once asked to make a shirt with Jesus on a bucket of chicken, with chicken coming out of the bucket. I didn't feel right about making that one. I've been asked to make a shirt promoting an adult film, one that promoted a strip club, and one or two that promoted violence. I couldn't in good conscience print any of those shirts. Another shirt we declined was a simple black shirt with white text that read, homosexuality is a sin. I didn't feel right making that one either. I don't think that's how Jesus would have handled the issue. Jesus would have balanced grace and truth. I have gay customers and employ gay people. For example, we have printed materials for a local band called Mother Jane, whose lead singer is a lesbian. That was never a problem because, as I said, we'll work with everyone, but we can't print all messages. Shortly after our case started, two lesbian printers in New Jersey voiced their support for us because they didn't want to be forced to print messages that would violate their consciences. That's why I was glad when a judge ruled that I had the freedom to decide which messages I wanted to promote, and appeals court also agreed. Unfortunately though, the government has appealed again, this time asking the Kentucky Supreme Court to hear the case. The bottom line for me, I love designing t-shirts, and I'd be pretty crushed if I had to close down hands-on, especially after all the years of building the business, serving my community, and doing what I love. All we are asking for is that the government not force us to promote messages against our convictions. Everyone should have... Welcome back. We're talking about now Sutter County, uh, after they tried to sneak through a massive raise. You know, they think they, just because all the other supervisors, uh, my, the argument I made in the super, the argument against supervisor salaries was, we don't want them to be paid that much money anyway even what they're getting in retirement and all this tuna sandwich money they call per diem and all that. Mary, Mary Yuba County, I think gets about 300 bucks a month in, in tuna sandwich money. It's like these guys think they walk on water just because they got voted into office. So now we have, uh, this homeless thing has become a big, uh, fad legislation. And here's what the local people say, these local government officials. Oh, we got to do it. We got to pay them more money. We got to put them up in hotels, no matter whether they're stoned out of their minds and tell everybody to screw off. Hey, did you hear one of them came out? You know where they're working on the levee down here? The big rigs came out and started shooting at the big rigs. I don't know whether they're making too much noise. Guy woke the guy up. Maybe he's coming off heroin and started just firing on him. Yeah. I think I told me that on the phone today. So, uh, you know, guys, they, they get food stamps, free medical. They got Social Security, disability, all kinds of money, right? Section 8, uh, all kinds of help, right, to go to the hospital for free. And uh, now we, you know, Sutter County over there, you guys in Sutter County, your health department, your health and human services, O'Hara, she's putting them up for a grand a month in hotel rooms. Homeless guy, just staying loaded every day. Said, man, this is good. This Sutter County is good. Let me smoke some more of that. Give me a bowl full of that. Come on, man. Life has never been good for people that are wanting to be irresponsible. Oh, well, Lou, a lot of them are mental patients. And yeah, I know. I meet them in Yuba County Jail. There's, there's answers for that. You can't figure it out. We've been paying. It's amazing to me. We've been paying people $150,000, $250,000, work every single day, right? You got all this retirement. We got all, they're working for social services and medical and health. And and then all of a sudden this homeless thing started and said, well, where are all those people coming from? Why don't you go? That That's your people. I thought you, who are your people you're supposed to be doing stuff for? Not sitting in some air conditioned office watching CNN, right? All of a sudden we're all, energize oh my god we love those people why don't you take one in scott mitnick could afford one he's making almost three hundred thousand dollars you take a couple into your house over there on that you say you live in yuba city 
or Sutter County, take take a couple in. I talked to a gal, Eileen Jacobs, back in 19, I think it was about 87. She was going to sue the Salvation Army. I said, why would, why would you want to sue the Salvation Army and take some of their money that's supposed to go through to help alleviate people can't make their house payments and give it away to homeless people? Well, I really care about the homeless. I said, let me solve this for you. There was a bunch of people around the table. Everybody was a government employee. I said, why don't you just all take one in? We'll solve this thing right here. We'll fix it tonight. We don't need to sue anybody. Why fight? Let's just let, put your put your money where your mouth is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Just got, got her fat rear scurrying out the door. Rather sue somebody, take some money, build a homeless camp, take, and then get the appeal Democrat, right? The mouthpiece of Sutter County and Yuba County. Shout it up. Oh, my God, we're saving the world at 14 forward. They got some one person out there who found a house. That goes on every day. People find houses, get off drugs, do go to rehabs and all that stuff. Anyway, the guys that run the aviation operation, uh, Sutter Buttes Aviation, said this is their letter to all their members. Sutter County is proposing a quote-unquote temporary homeless camp on the property near the sheriff's posse arena. I strongly believe this is from Joe Borzaleri, a good Irish guy. I strongly believe that this is not compatible with the airport environment. I want you to think of planes coming and going and people strung out on meth and loaded and drunk and everything <laughs> with a gun. Come on, baby. This is going to be exciting. Recently, there have been aircraft and vehicle break-ins and property stolen. According to Joe, Borzaleri, the, the uh, Irish Italian. I am very concerned for the safety of aircraft operations and the security of the airport, according to Joe. If an incident should occur, it would make the airport and the county look very bad. Not only would it, I'm, I'm inserting this, this is Lou Benninger's version. Not only would they look bad, they would get sued, and you know who would have to pay that money out? You and me. But Ron Sullinger, the supervisor from the 1st District, he likes to say, well, that's exactly why we have insurance. We can, like, do stupid stuff. And then insurance just comes in and wipes our bottom. The problem is, according to Charles Smith, who's the public information officer for the county of Sutter, he said one time in the paper, once a guy died, you know, a number of guys die every few months in the uh, Sutter County Jail. And so Charles said that when they pay $800,000 to the, the, the survivors of the dead person, they, the county is responsible for about a hundred grand of that. Now, what happens in your life, your personal life, when you screw up repeatedly and get tickets and crash your car, does your insurance go down? It doesn't go down, huh? It doesn't stay the same. You got canceled. Is that what you're telling me out there? One guy's waving his hand. He said he got canceled. Hmm. They canceled you. So we've had numbers of those $800,000 payout. Then we just paid out a few years ago, 150,000 Elizabeth Pollard for sexual harassment. Then we just paid $50,000 a piece to a couple of mental health workers that didn't feel they were properly managed. And now we're, we're kicking, uh, Clint Eastwood to the curb. Jason Parker and uh and Jason's going to be collecting some cash over there but he just wants his job back but probably they're going to want to pay th they'll hire some little sissy that doesn't have anything hanging between his legs anymore and then they'll uh, pay off Jason. So anyway, Joe Borzaleri, president of the aviation operation at Sutter County private nonprofit group he said if an incident occurred, it would make the airport and the county look very bad. I don't think he he said that. He went a little weak on that part. I do not think the county realizes the liability involved with having people camping on airport property. Joe, now you're getting closer to it, dude. I would like, he said, to have as many Sabra, that's the initials for their organizations, the aviation operators out there, I would like to have as many Sabra members and people that are Sutter County residents call and email the Sutter County Board of Supervisors. We need to intervene now and not allow this to happen. 
This, what he means by this, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's a big secret. Did you know that? Oh, you don't, you didn't see that big display in the, in the offices of the CAO or like in, t- like down in the council's chamber or the city, the supervisor's chamber. You didn't see that, that big map where they want to put a whole homeless camp and building and parking lot along the airport. You didn't see that. Oh, you're thinking that you're thinking that's secret now. They're like trying to slide that through on you. Well, he says, um, we need to intervene now, says Joe Borzilleri, and not allow this to happen. Once this homeless camp, in quotes, is in place, it would ne- be nearly impossible to make it go away. It does not allow, align with our airport layout plan at all. So let me, let me explain airport layout plan. The FAA, that's the Federal Aviation Administration, who oversees, permits, gives money to, and uh, can cite and cause problems with every airport in the United States, they, they are the big dogs over airports. I want to ask you, you ever fly before? If I told you I'd get you there nine times out of ten, would you fly my air, airplane? <laughs> nine times out of ten, would you fly into Sutter County Airport if you knew you had a homeless dude loaded on meth with a handgun next to the airport and he gets tired of people flying in and waking him up so he tells them that he flips him the bird and shoots shoots at the pilot? How about that? Or I heard this is what Chris Starkey. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you. If you want to listen to this show at your own time or if your wife tells you, you can't listen to that show while I'm in the house. Then you can listen to it on One Eye Blind Media on the YouTube. Go to YouTube. If you're, you're like me, I'm a little slow. Go to YouTube. Get that on your computer. Then, then type in the little box there, One Eye Blind Media. Not one blind eye, like Andy says. It's one eye blind media. And then you'll see under lists, listening lists, you'll see Live with Lou. You can list, listen to this anytime. Well, anyway, at this meeting yesterday, Chris Starkey from One Eye Blind Media, he was recording it because he's got a Facebook site for this, for to promote Yuba City activities. He was recording it and filming it. And when he heard about this homeless camp thing, because he was there for this, this uh, raising salaries, he asked if he could give a little uh, his comment. So they let him comment. Well, well, it just happens that Chris is a veteran. And I'm not sure what conflict he was in, but it was oh, one of those Afghanistan-Iraq deals, right? There's been a, a number of those surges over there and stuff. So Chris gets up there and brings up a point. He says, if some, if any of those homeless folk happen to be veterans or happen to be suffering from PTSD and, uh, the two shooting ranges over there (laughs) start shooting and they're sleeping or they're hanging out over there, we're liable to have a guy go nutso thinking he's in combat. Just a thought. And I wonder if he had a gun, he might pull it. Now, we had a situation in tip, I'll tell you about it, without violating confidentiality. We had a situation where we responded to a dog chewing up its owners. And uh, what happened was this dog, which was the family dog, uh, he, the, the mother, there was a mother, a daughter, and then the daughter's daughter all there, the baby, the mother of the baby, and then grandma of the baby. They were there, and they got into a little argument, the mom and the daughter, and one was holding the baby. They just got into a thing. They got into it, not physically, but they were arguing. And the dog sensed, you know how dogs are sensitive, the dog sensed there was trouble and attacked the mother, the grandmother. And it was doing some big time damage. And so 911 got called. And finally, both women were getting chewed on. And 911 got called. 
And when the sheriff's deputy showed up, because it was in the county, along with the ambulance and the fire, the father of the, the husband, he had an episode, a P- PTSD episode, because the guy showed up with guns pulled and shot the dog. And the guy had a total meltdown because he reverted back to being in combat. It was just a shameful, it was just a shame, not a shameful. It was just one of those things that happened. People had a little conflict in their family. They had a little issue. They were sorting it out. There was, you know, their argument, not physical. And the dog went off. And so when, when, and, and there was enough damage to both women that they had to go to the hospital and have serious stitch ups. But the, 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 the thing I want to bring up is that gentleman who had served our country under very trying combat times in a, in the middle East, uh, was, was living with being traumatized by that. And that episode sent him off. Now, now, uh, Chris Starkey brought something like that up to the supervisors. And honestly, people, these supervisors, And this CAO don't know Jack what they're doing. And here's what they say. Well, we got to do it because some federal judge did something and said, we got to have something. We just can't say you got to obey the law. You know, it's down to you. They'll say, Hey, you violated the law. We're citing you be in court on Monday. But to a homeless person, they say, we can't do that. And that we owe, our society owes everybody a place to sleep at the end of the day. Now, I, th- I think that's BS. And where people are totally irresponsible and won't, and anything you suggested them to do, they will not do it. And please don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. I did, I'd done 40 years working on people off the streets. In fact, I was in the jail today talking to a heroin addict, or yesterday talking to a heroin addict, and uh, groups of them, and then singly a heroin addict trying to get her to do the right thing and get her into some help, and she, and she isn't paying attention, right? She keeps getting arrested, and so these guys say we got to obey the federal law. Now let me let me explain something to you. You may not get, you may not understand this. Do you understand? that the United States, it, the federal government did not come first, but cities, villages, and counties sprung up, and they created their own way of life and their own rules. And then they decided to organize into bigger units, and they let's call them a county. We could call them a township or whatever you want to call it. They organized together for mutual benefit, not to be lorded over, not for the counties to create laws and shove it down their throat. Not to tell them what bathrooms to go into or what they're going to teach their kids. But they organized for mutual benefit. Then we ended up what we call, we had these things called, we had little towns, Jamestown, Plymouth. Remember all the towns on the East Coast? And then they had colonies. And they called them Connecticut and different things, right? And then eventually we know them today as states, but by all means, they did not see themselves as being on the same playing field and they weren't all unified. But at one point they decided through a lot of debate and discussion and wrangling to unite. We didn't start with America and come up with a divine plan of 50 states or as Obama would say, 57 or 58. But it was just the other way around, and all, all they wanted, these cities, these cities and t- villages, is just some mutual support and protection and working together. They did not expect that they would be lorded over by supervisors and city councils to tell them how they had to run, right, or states, what they ended up having states. So then when they united, when they united, the states were still sovereign. If you look at even the, the responsibilities of Donald Trump, if you look at the Constitution, don't listen to the government. Read the Constitution. 
he hardly has any responsibilities. He's a leader, supposed to be a leader, but I mean, he's he's supposed to be an ambassador between our country and other countries, like he was just the United Nations. It was not, there was never a thought. Well, there was a thought. They thought if this happens, if, if, if what is happening right now, it was described by the founding fathers, we would need to overthrow it. They describe what's happening right now. A federal government that is telling us in Sutter County, a federal judge, oh, you, you can't say that to them. You know what I'd do? I would send him a big finger and tell him to stick it. We're going to do what we want. The same thing, I was just talking to Dave Bryan out of Church of Glad Tidings about Senate Bill 54 that just passed on sanctuary cities. If we have time, I'm going to cover it. Do you realize that they're forbidding our local sheriff and police chiefs to work with, with immigration, federal immigration people that are in charge of protecting our borders? That is a reason that the states united was to protect our borders from invaders. You get that? And the, the law enforcement at the federal level, that was a primary mission, not welfare, not education, not Department of the Interior, not EPA, not Energy Commission. None of that was part of the Constitution. Protection of our borders was. And we have a government in California that says, we're telling Sheriff Durfer and Sheriff Parker and Police Chief Landon and Police Chief Easton to not cooperate on minor offenses when you realize a person is in this country illegally. Let them go free in this country. Listen, people, how bad is it going to get for you're going to do something? I want you to think about that. They're shoving. We should, our sheriff, and the sad thing is, I have great respect for Landon and Parker and Durfer, but I don't know whether any of those three guys are going to, are going to, flip off the state of California and said, buddy, I'm elected by the people of Sutter County, Yuba County, appointed by the city council of Yuba city, Marysville. And I, I'm going to do what I think is best for this city and this County and to hell with you people. Right? Because we're a sanct we're a sanctuary to ourselves. Right now. That's the way this country started. Now it isn't up for opinion. That's just the way it is. If you want to say we're not going to do that anymore, then that's another argument for another day. But the fact is we started with California not going out and creating cities and townships and counties. It went just the opposite. And a bunch of counties and farms and townships decided let's all get to get together, just like we're talking about in Northern California here in the 21, 24 counties up here. Let's all get together and separate from California and create Jefferson. It isn't like the opposite where Jefferson says, let's create, let's do something different. No, we're, we're doing just the opposite. We're saying we don't want to be under, like they said in the colleagues, we don't want to be under England. We want to be separate, right? So why would we want somebody like England telling us what to do from Sacramento, right? So we're coming right back and, uh, they, Wikiman's keeping track of time and we need to take a break. You're listening to the station that's been owned and operated by your friends and neighbors for over 72 years. The Big 14, five in a row. Come on, baby, let's vote it. Number one then, and number one in local talk now. Hey, this is Live with Lou, broadcasting high atop Mount Hoot. KMYC, 1410 AM, Marysville, Yuba City. Okay, EBT is basically about electronic benefit transfer and it's basically about welfare and having children and um, just for money just for the state so the state of california can pay for WIC, gr uh, food stamps um, 
daycare. I mean, the state of California, I mean, if you want EBT, the state of California is the best place to, to, to get your money. They'll pay you the most. And yeah, it's like 221 for GR and about 179 for food. That's for each person. So, yeah. You get free daycare, you get free food. You can go to fast food restaurants now. Um, Domino's Pizza is accepting EBT. McDonald's, I haven't saw a sign for McDonald's. Subway, you can, get your EB, you can take your EBT card. Like you get 221 in cash, you get free daycare, so if you have four kids or six kids, you get, you get money for free daycare, so all of them can go to daycare. Most people, they have their friend as the daycare person, and they split the money, I heard all about it. And um, they split the money for that, and then you have, um, the cash that they give you, and then the lights and gas and the free home. I mean, who would want to work in America? This is what the taxpayers are paying for. Oh, all right. Well, if we're counting right, because we're pre-recording this for all you that just dropped in, uh, we're into our last hour here, and it should be, if we're right, we counted right, we should be in between 11 and noon on Saturday, the 23rd of September. Otherwise, we're lost in space, me and Wiki Man. So I'm talking about uh, the brilliance of our Ventura County County and City Administrator or County Administrator from Thousand Oaks, Scott Mitnick. Oh, by the way, I guess he was trying to find out who leaked the plot plan today. Somebody, somebody. There's people in, you know something? There's some good people in every department that don't want things to go down funky. You know that? Whether it's the DA department, the sheriff's department, police department, something goes funky. They think, I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to give up my name, but I need to get the word out. So out comes the word. So then they come headhunting the bullies who did that. We're going to arrest you. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. So there's a plot plan that slipped out, and there is a plan right next to the airport to put 200 homeless people in a tent camp. Whoa. Plus parking area for all their contraptions and cars and stuff, RVs, plus Another building with showers and kitchen and meeting room, and they're just going to serve the public right down there and and uh, right next to the airport. Now, I get a kick out of it because I live in downtown Marysville, and, and I'm just a few blocks from 14 forward. That's the, I call it the Bendorf Zoo. I like Bob, Bob Bendorf, and I think he's probably a really good administrator. He's a sharp guy, started out as a law enforcement official. And I always like those guys. I don't always agree with what Robert Bendorf does. And I think he gets paid way too much money, even though I like him. So, but he started this Bendorf zoo over there and that's their homeless camp. And it's totally changed my neighborhood. One day I found a guy taking a poop in my backyard. I have an eight foot fence. He figured out a way to get through it. And, uh, cause I back up to Taco Bell and they promised me, when they put a fence back there, because they say, is it okay? Cause we didn't always have Taco Bell back there. And they said, we'll put up an eight fence. If you don't complain, we'll put a drive through there. So now at night, I listen to them order tacos all, all night. Hi, this is Taco Bell. What can I do for you? Ah, give me six of them. Hear the country music playing. Give me six of them taco, tacos. Give me six of them tacos and uh, a Coke. Will Pepsi do? Yeah, Pepsi will do. You want to supersize that? So all night I hear that, right? But I got to put an eight-foot fence, and one day I was having coffee in the morning, and a guy was coming out after relieving himself in my backyard. Now, if if they'll come in your backyard, you think they won't hop a fence and get all drunk and go out there and say, let's play on the, on the runway? <laughs> let's shoot at one of those airplanes landing. They're all stoned. You ever been, hey, you ever been under the influence of psychedelics? I have. Things aren't how they seem to be, right? You think those are spaceships coming in? <laughs> hey, that's a demon. Like, let's get rid of him. We've been on meth for 25 days. We're, we're down to skin and bones, right? 
We need to stop those demons from landing out there. Boom, 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 boom. Come on, man. You know, these people are so full of baloney, these supervisors, Scott Mitch. They, they are going to get their butts kicked by this homeless thing. They have no. You, somebody said to me, I heard that the, I heard Sutter County Sheriff said this, but I don't know. I like Paul Parker. I heard he said this, but I, I'm, it could have been any cop. Here, it sounds good, doesn't it? Listen to me. We're not going to arrest our way out of this. I thought, who thought of that? Where did that come from? We've been arresting gang members, sending them for 30, 20, 40 years in prison. Nortenos, Sedanos having gang task force. I've been on gang task force. Gang units, assault units, infiltrating the Nortenos, the white supremacists. Why didn't we think of this? We can't arrest our way out of that. It's like the pastor the other day said, he don't want to preach about, he don't want to encourage his people to go to the life chain coming up because he didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I thought, hey, well, why don't we, why don't we bring up, why, why don't we, why are we still talking about adultery, right? Or like cussing people out and being funky with people, right? Or stealing from people because that's going to hurt people's feelings because they probably all done that. So we're not going to arrest our way out of it. You know, I was over there. I, I don't, I don't shop at Starbucks anymore with my own money, but I got given a gift card and man, I really like their, I stumbled across this. They call it uh, coffee, just a plain coffee Frappuccino. Wow. That the flavor of that almost, I almost get euphoric. I just saw, I can't drive when I drink it. I have to stand still, but it's right there by CVS 10th and E in Marysville. It's, they had so many homeless there that they had to build like a $20,000 security cage over the dumpsters. It's unbelievable. Drive by it's steel. And it's got a top on it. Like a, uh, you know, a cabana look, but it's steel. I mean, you, you'd have to be a skinny meth addict to get bit between the slats, but they built that. They did it at the request of the elite security, the police, we're not respond to that business. You know, it's a very business. It's got CVS, Walgreens, Panda Express, AT&T. I got myself a phone over there the other day. My phone crapped out. And then uh, they got a couple sandwich shops in Tri-County Bank. They had so many homeless in there mooching off people, panhandling, harassing. Nobody's enforcing those laws around Marysville anymore. So they had to hire private security. So they hired Monty Hecker with Elite Security. And I called Monty a while back. I thanked him for his guys over there. And so the other day I was over there and there were two panhandlers, just like cigar, cigar box Indians or cigar store Indians. You know, the, they were standing on each side of the doorway as you go in, hitting people up into Starbucks. Starbucks, you know, they're so left wing uh, that I don't know why they didn't offer them a job. Or, right? Because they said they're going to hire all the refugees, right? So, uh, and, be, and they hate Trump. So, uh, I thought, well, why didn't they just hire these guys? And so they were hustling. So I got on the phone with elite security, Marty, I do no use calling them Arizona police department. Cause they're, it's like, Hey, that's not against the law here. So, it, I mean, it's on the books against the law, but who cares about what the ordinance says that only applies to me when I screw up. So anyway, I called elite security. I said, Hey, Monty, I got some guys over here. Where are your guys? He said, Lou, they're not paying us uh, for for certain hours, they're only paying us for certain hours, right? We are there from such and such to such and such. And so they wanted to cut back on how much they're paying. So, and I said, well, you just tell the guys over here that, <laughs> so he's, he really thanked me because he, he did, because they're not there right then. They weren't assigned to be there. They weren't paying for them to be there at the time I was there. So he said, oh, I'll let them know that there's a lot of action over there. And they're, hara- they got signs up, right? <laughs> it's hilarious. Don't. Don't loiter or panhandle, right? Right? It's like saying, don't pee in the toilet, right? Don't pee. Just hold it. <laughs> Just hilarious, man. The this this country has lost their mind. They've lost their common sense. The guy on the phone to, that called me today, he said to me, Don't these people get it? <laughs> he says. If you feed the bears, 
They will not forage for their own food, right? And they will, they, it will just draw more bears, right? And I said, yep, they don't like berries if they can get a tuna sandwich and mayo. <laughs> so I, I, I was walking the other day. I was, I don't get to do yard work much anymore. I don't have time, but I was doing a little yard work. And I walked from the side of my house where the guy took a poop and, uh, I walked and, and I came around the front and I just felt the presence of someone there. I don't know. I didn't see anybody. I wasn't, I was looking towards the street and I just felt the presence, right? I guess I'm, I, you know, some people, although I, th I'm trying to be a Christian, some people don't think I qualify, but I think I had some discernment all of a sudden and I felt a presence and I turned around and a lady was sitting on my front porch. <laughs> it's hilarious. I thought. I looked over and the, the guy was a pretty good looking lady. And I thought, so she was sitting there like she owned the place. So she asked me, she said, Oh, are you the uh, gardener? I walked up to her. I said, how you doing? And she said, fine. She was looking at her cell phone sitting out right on my front, front porch. I said, how you doing? She says, fine. And I said, she said, are you the maintenance guy here or gardener? I said, well, yeah. But I said, I live here. She said, oh, someone lives here. And she'd been looking through the windows. And she said, doesn't look. She said, before I said that, she, she, she said, you live here. I said, I said, yeah, I live here. She said, uh, she said, well, it doesn't look like anybody lives here to me. She looked inside. She said, the place has all got boxes in it. I said, well, that's kind of how I live. You know, I'm just kind of a warehouse look. You know, it's got the warehouse, the warehouse motif. Right. And so. I said, what are you up to? She said, oh, not much. I said, seems like you're loaded on methamphetamines. She said, no, I'm not. I said, when did you use last? She said, oh, yesterday. I said, you, you use every day? She said, oh, no, just, you know, it's like the addict said, I can quit any time I want. I just like, you know, right, I quit any time I want. Just I could quit tomorrow if I wanted, if I wanted to, if I wanted to. So she said, oh, just use every once in a while. I said, oh, you see, I said, you're fine. No, you're all, all right. Yeah. She said, I'm just looking for a place to stay. She said, is this place available? I said, no, I'm, I'm here. And you know, I, that's my neighborhood, right? And now Robert Bindorf brought our neighborhood. Isn't it interesting? The constitution says they're supposed to protect and serve, right? Protect us, not provide welfare. Not to provide health health services, not to do education. That was for all the local area to just do that. That's all we needed the county people to do is just protect and serve. City, police, keep it to a minimum, dude. I'll clean up in front of my own house. Protect and serve. We got Ubis at our disposal. They do a great job. Pick up my garbage. They sweep the street. Picks up a few extra things that I miss. Thank you, Jesus. Police. Don't do jack, can't solve a murder, chase people around, people shoot at each other, can't figure out who done that, can't stop a homeless, ain't going to enforce because these homeless people, they're victims because I, I earned a living, I saved, I caused them to not have a house, I'm causing all these problems. So therefore, I deserve to have these people. I, I you, you know, from my, my experience in Asia, in Vietnam, they never wear their shoes in the house. So they converted me. I finally thought, oh, I get this shoes in the house. It's a lot. It's like, it's like more peaceful. It's like more laid back and the house stays cleaner. So I started leaving my shoes outside. So then all my shoes got stolen because I left them on the front porch in Asia. That never happens. People say, oh my God, you're going to Vietnam. That's so dangerous. I said, you're kidding me. Marysville's far more dangerous. Oliver, Linda, Yuba city. Far more dangerous than Vietnam. Why? Why is that? Because there's a high pr police presence in a communist country. You may not like a lot of things about communism. I don't. I don't like a lot of things about communism. But I'm telling you, man, there's a police presence. And, and, and you don't get out of line or you'll be jacked up in a heartbeat. But we, we're paying for something. If you're a business in town, you ought to hire elite security. Because you're not getting no security any other place. You got it? And so uh, these people have no idea what they're doing. Mr. Mitnick in Sutter County. And they, can you imagine 
if one of these drunk people, pe- I'm telling you, these people have, I get a kick out of people. They say, oh, my God, you go into the Yuba County Jail. You, you like, hang out with these people. Somebody said to me, oh, you went to the city limits. Uh, uh, what do they call it? Showgirls place. Honestly, people, I, I, I'm comfortable with these people because I worked with them for 40 years. I, has any supervisor, has any employee of the counties ever taken in anybody? You know, I was laying in the dentist chair today, and I was talking to the gal that was cleaning my teeth. Who cleans? She's really cool. And so she was saying, when are you leaving for Vietnam? I said, I'm leaving to Vietnam in a few days. Anyway, we were talking, and I was asking, I said, why don't you have a couple more babies? And uh, so we were talking about babies, and, and so I, somehow we got on the fact that that Glad Tidings took like 150 babies, right? From Chet, Remember we were taking the babies from the prison? And we were raising those babies. She said, did they go to CPS or foster? And I said, no, 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 no. We were trying to keep them out of there, and we gave them back to the moms when they got out, and we took them into our homes, and, and we helped them get on their feet. Well, the gal, the gal, one gal was working on my teeth, telling them how bad they were, and the other gal was writing it down on a computer. And the other gal says, "My family took one of those babies," and I had my glasses off, so I looked out of the corner of my eye. I could see she is a female, but I couldn't tell who she was. But she was Greg Gomer's daughter. You remember Greg? You know Greg, and Melody. Remember Melody? And they took Angie, and the, and I said, "Oh," she said, "I'm Greg's daughter." And I said, oh, I know, I know your people. Well, here's the deal. Greg Gomer and his wife, Melody, before she died of cancer, they took in this beautiful baby girl, and mom decided she didn't want her after all the deal, and they've raised her up. Now she's probably in college. But they have experience taking in hardship cases like that, and we have people who have taken in the moms. The supervisors have no experience in that. The head of human services, I get, I guess, Mrs. O'Hara, and I think it's Vasquez over here in Yuba County, they're making a quarter million dollars a year. You think they're ever taking a homeless pe- person in and prove they can actually see them change and get their life together and get a job and stay off alcohol and don't go nuts with PTSD? You think they've ever fixed one person themselves? I don't know. Ask them. Call them out at the next supervisor's meeting. Says, is anybody here, can anybody name anybody that you've ever helped on your own, with your own money, using your own facilities, taking your own time away from your family, and done one thing? Then why would you take our money, not your money? You know, it's easy, so easy. You know, you remember you remember Donnie Moore, uh, Santos, Donnie Moore? He, I used to get a kick out of him. You know, Donnie Moore, he used, went, back in his day, he used to play football and he used to be strong, tear phone books up and do all that kind of stuff, get people's attention. He used to come and speak at the church. And the one thing I always remember about Donnie, not <laughs> anything spiritual he said, but he always used to say when he'd take the offering, he'd say, reach into the guy's pocket next door, next to you, and give like you always wanted to, right? You remember that? I love that saying. Reach into the, get the checkbook of the guy next to you and write out a check like you always wanted to tithe. That's exactly what these supervisors are doing. They love, they just love to take on new projects and spend your money. They're not spending their money. It's not their money. And so when it doesn't work out, they go, oh, well, we'll have to just try something different. By God, if that was their money, and they dropped a hundred grand, five hundred grand. They might, they might never recover. They might shoot themselves. They might have to go get a therapist. They would never do it again. I'll tell you, you get burned a couple times in a relationship, or with money. Spend your money unwisely, stupidly. That'll be that's a good lesson for you. But I'll tell you, politicians. They just say there's more where that came from. Let's just add a 1% tax, like over here in Yuba County. Spend all the money. Start a, start a big homeless fiasco. Run short of money. Give pensions away. Keep, keep raising the pensions. Don't stand and keep sticking it up with CalPERS, getting ripped off by those mafia mafiosos down at CalPERS. Rip off outfits. 
just keep raising and then they say oh well you know we're just doing it we're just, oh yeah well we, we we can't do anything about it oh, it's just the state of california oh yeah state all oh, the federal government oh we can't go against the federal government why can't you why can't you just tell them to go to hell maybe you shouldn't be our supervisor if you can't do that maybe you're a eunuch i you know i i looked up eunuch did you ever look up eunuch it's in the bible you know the Bible says some, some are eunuchs of their own choice. Some were eunuchs against their choice. <whistles> That's bad sound right there. Some were forced to be eunuchs. Some were born that way, the Bible says. Bible, I'm talking Bible now, so don't get all lathered up. Are you Christians out there that are Pharisees? Just take it easy. The Bible says some of you born that way. Some of you got made that way. Some of you joined up. You said, cut those things off. I don't need them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that job for the king. I, you know, I don't mind if my voice goes up a little bit. I'm okay with it. What you got is the spirit of eunuch have taken over politics today. Got all these little sissy boys running around. Remember when about the only thing Arnold Schwarzenegger ever said that was right was the girly boys. Right, the girly boy comment. Oh my God, people just said, oh, their their wrists got all limp and their hand fell down. Their lips they kind of flop, got floppy, and they said, oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe he said that. That was the only thing he said out of the eight years we had him that made any sense. We got a half hour left. I spent all I got all this stuff to talk about. I just blew it so much on just a couple topics, but we'll see if we can land the plane in a decent way without getting shot at from those homeless people. Be right back. Hello, this is Kalander, not your mother, an Obamer. <laughs> and guess what, people? I love President Obama. Yes, I do. I love President Obama. And guess what? And guess what? I voted for him. Do you want to know why I voted for him? Do you want to know why? Do you want to know why? Because he black. He black, he black, he black. He black, he black, he black. Yes, I said it. I said it again. I voted for him because he was black. Yes, I did. And guess what? I'm going to get me some health care. Show enough is. Show enough. I don't know why you looking at me. You need to be at work so you can pay for my health care. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I L-O-V-E-I-T it. Yes, I do. I'm getting health care. Ain't got no job. I love America. I love me some America. Me and my seven children. All seven of my children going to get some health care now. Show enough. Sign the bill, honey. Sign the bill. <laughs> ah. So, anywho, that's all I gotta say about it. And if you don't like President Barack Obama, if you don't like him, then you is a racist. Yes, I said it. You is a racist. Uh huh. Yeah, you are. Because you know what? President Obama is doing good by me. Uh huh. Now, yes, I can get sick now. <laughs> so, y'all keep going to work. Making all that money because your taxes is helping me and my chillings. All right, over now. Thank you. I love America. We're into our last half hour today. This is the Patriot KMYC. We're up here on Mount Hoot down in the bunker, part of the Obama resistance. I used to say that all the time. I thought he'd be gone by now, but no. Obama is part of the rebellion against the Trump move. Did you like Trump this week? I got people saying to me, oh, you should have listened to the talk at the United Nations. You listened to the talk? I started to, and I thought, man, the guy doesn't have any momentum. So I quit. And then I saw a post by Dave Bryan, and then somebody else called me and said, hey, you, you listen to that talk. You better listen to that talk. So I listened to the talk, and when he called the North Korean the rocket man, I thought, that guy just made my day right there. Can you see the old pussy, old Barack Obama calling that guy the rocket man? That Obama, that guy is twisted. What a twisted person. 
thank you, Jesus. I don't have to. I tell you what, he affected my health the last eight years. I felt like I, I just felt like I got set free. I feel like I'm a 16 year old again in an old, I'm trapped in an old hundred year old body, but I'm all fired up inside. Hey, I want to tell you just some things that our legislature, if you're, if you're wondering whether you need to join the state. Oh, let me say this first. I just want to make another comment about the tea party. Sutter Butte's tea party Patriots. They're meeting on the first and third Monday of each month at glad tidings out at highway 99 Eagle road in Yuba city. Get there at six. They got some refreshments. They're good people. They're just your, you know what I like about them? When I, when we had the first Jefferson meeting, remember the first Jefferson meeting the church building was packed to the doors. And I looked around and I said, these are my kind of people right here, man. Guys in construction shirts and those, you know, just hardworking people. And that's what the tea party people are like. They're just good people. They just want, you know what they want? It isn't complicated, is it? You want people to, you want politicians, you want your representatives to be honest, to, to use your money wisely, to be transparent people, to be, if you have a question to answer it, uh, you know, simple, right? Not blow the money, not do stupid stuff. Right. And so the tea party and, and follow the rules, right? Why do we have to follow the rules? And everybody just says, oh, we don't have to follow the Constitution. Oh, we can, we can leak emails. Oh, we can do this. Oh, we can, we can run roughshod over an employee or whatever. You can follow the rules, right? Not it's simple. Go to tea party meetings. Get involved. Listen, people, I'm telling you, if you don't do something, you're going to get your butt kicked, and you have no one to blame but yourself. So everybody ought to go to the supervisor meeting on the 26th. That's on a Tuesday coming up because, uh, even if it's not on the agenda, it's sh that, f that raise and this homeless thing, whether it's on the agenda or not, you can stand up and speak when in the, the portion of the meeting, when anybody can talk about anything, they just may not, they don't have to address it or they can't vote on it, but you can stand up and you can just rail. Thank you, Jesus. You can still do that. In a communist country, they may haul you out and beat you up and take you to incarcerate you. That's the difference. But you can still say that here. Whether they whether they give you, give a care about what you say, I don't know. But at some point, you, we just have to throw the guys out and the gals if it's a gal, right? You just have to throw people out. You need to get serious about this. Your your lives are at stake. So uh, let me just tell you some things that the last legislature did if you wonder about whether we need a new state, because honestly, you're not going to vote your way out of this at the state level. SB1, this last year, uh, the legislative session just ended, so this is what happened. SB1 increased your gas taxes by 20 cents a gallon as of November 1. You've noticed it at the pump. And uh, it's already gone up right now because of those the storms and stuff. But in another month or so, 20 cents automatic. And your vehicle license fees, an added average, additional on whatever you're paying, just add $100. If you, run, if you have a real expensive late model car, you're going to get hammered. This is an average. So I figure I'm on I'm gonna, I'm mine, I'm going to have to pay $100 more. I just can't believe it. You could go up and register your car like in Texas. A gal told me she was coming back here to take care of her mama and she from Texas and she knew me. She called me because she needed some help from tip. And she said, Lou, I've been down in Texas. And she said, it cost me $20 a year or $20 for three years to register my, my car in Texas. She said, what's up with this $500? They passed a cap and trade tax which will increase gas another 63 to 93 cents a gallon. Plus taxes will go on on top of that. This is the increase plus taxes. Proposed increase on new tax. Did you know this is unbelievable, people? When you think we're not in a socialist country, they're now going to tax the tap water. Is that unbelievable? 
they passed a bond. I don't know how they did that. I don't this 3.46 billion parks bond. You know where the parks are going to be worked on in disadvantaged communities. You know what happens when you put a great park in a disadvantaged community? They trash it. In front of my house, I just constantly pick up garbage from homeless people and stupid people walking up and down the street throwing garbage out. Why don't they take care of the street? They don't have a heart for it, right? Why put money into those places? So it's going to go into a lot of it into Los Angeles. You know what the debt service per year is on $3.46 billion? $200 million a year out of our taxes is going to go to pay interest. You're going to get your, your tap water taxed. Did you know that in some areas that when it rains and people want to catch the rain, like in a barrel, that's illegal? They're trying to redistribute and con conserve water. That's illegal because it, the rain belongs to the government. It belongs to the Scott Mitnicks of the world. Do you know they passed a law to release any lifer in prison, murder, rape, and child molester who has got to be 60 years of age and spent 25 years in prison? Right? So you pull the, the slot machine, ring, and if it comes up 60 and 25, you're out. Murder, rape, child molest. Charlie Manson qualifies now. Isn't that amazing? I just saw where Van Houten, Leslie Van Houten, applied, and the parole board said yes. Usually Brown says no. The parole board got to say yes, and Brown's got to say yes. How about this? A new $10 charge on all residents living in mobile home parks. You live in a mobile home park, you got to pay the government $10 extra to address living conditions and enforcement in those terrible, you know, trailer parks. You know, it's interesting. Who lives in trailer parks? The rich? No, the poor do, right? Gas taxes. Who do they hurt? The rich? I don't care. It's the poor, right? Just screw the poor. You think, oh, these Democrats, they're all for the poor, the working men. No, they aren't. They're for themselves. They're all perverts. You think perverts care about other people? No, they care about themselves. Do you know that this last year that we pay these assemblymen and senators, I don't know, $150,000 a year or something in California, plus all the expenses to each of them have offices and staffs, on top of their salary. And you know they spent time and they picked. I want you to just sit down, right? If you got it, any weed, smoke, just light one up right now and just get some in your lungs and get a little euphoric so this doesn't have such a bad effect on you. <clears throat> they spent time and debate and uh, argued back and forth to pick an official dinosaur for the state of California. This is, uh, is this like stupid or what? And these are the people that are running our lives. They blackmailed, you know, Tesla. They told Tesla, either you unionize with the United Auto Workers or you will forfeit all your state incent incentives, which means any cash we're going to kick down to you because of making battery powered cars and implements. If that ain't socialist, folks, and I wrote in the territorial about the Davis-Bacon Act, you can see it. It's in this week's territorial, and I finished it, and I think it's AB 1250 or 2150. It's forcing counties to not, they can't subcontract any services out to the private industry and save money or save time. They got to hire more and more government employees that are under government unions, and that means all your taxes go up and you get less for your money. And now they're, they're forcing, this is your government forcing a company to become unionized. That's, to, that's tyranny, people. If you want a definition of tyranny, that's government telling businesses how they how to operate. Do you remember Barack Obama telling 
was it the head of GM that they couldn't pay their C the CEO more than a certain amount of money or they're paying them too much money. <clears throat> Here's another one. Remember it used to be a felony. If you knew you had AIDS or HIV to have sex with somebody and to infect them without telling them, did you know that? Now this is really stupid. They've reduced that to a misdemeanor. Why didn't they just take it completely off the books and let people kill people themselves, right? and just go ahead and just screw people over reduce from a felony to a misdemeanor, right? Now here's the, the there's a lot more, but I'm just, I'm not going to belabor this. The, well, there's a couple more. I'll give preferential treatment to prisoners convicted of serious crimes that are less than 25 years old. Hold on now because their brains are not mature enough to understand right from wrong. I want you to just let that soak in and think about what 25. I had a gal. Well, I'm not even going to go there. That <laughs> It's too gnarly. Gal called me on the phone today on the tip line wanting parenting advice. 27-year-old girl. She sounded a lot younger. A bill will require the true sex of a person. On your driver's license, you're not going to be able to tell who you are anymore except by the picture. They ain't going to say male on there for you, Wiki. I don't know what they're going to put there. Next one, free legal services, not for the poor of this country, but for illegal Im immigrants, so that anybody that can get in here illegally will, give, will appoint you an attorney free of charge to stay here. Is that unbelievable? Is this like a blow in your mind? you think... Oh, well, I don't know whether I want to get involved with the state of Jefferson, you know, like, I don't know, like people like Stan Cleveland, well, I don't like his high voice. Well, I don't really think it'll ever come to pass. So, right. you know, nothing comes to pass unless you put your shoulder to the wheel, unless you're, it's a bowel movement. <clears throat> oh, it'll never come to pass. Well, I don't know. You know, Monday nights, I like to watch football and I don't, you know. I don't have to watch football. I don't want to know whether I want to go out to another meeting. Here's one. Just the final one. We're now going to establish safe in injection zones run by the government to oversee people shooting their heroin. <laughs> the, maybe Scott Mitnick will oversee that. Well, maybe we can set up an injection room down by the airport where they can shoot up heroin and make sure it doesn't have any fentanyl or Ajax in it or help them shoot methamphetamines and make it sure it's good. I, obviously, none of these people have ever been around a person with meth psychosis. <laughs> oh, these people are just like killing me right here, right now. I just think this is like... Uh, you ever seen one flew over the cuckoo's nest, that movie? This is like one of the, these people are from one flew over the cuckoo's nest, man. This is like, is, uh, is Mitnick Jack Nicholson? <laughs> I just like, come on, man. This is like too stupid. Like, oh yeah, let's put all this like party down here, man. Like, whoa. Like I've hauled people, <laughs> I pulled people out to the back of Walmart, right? and dumped them off guys I've worked like heroin addicts, right? Guys that got ankle bracelets on and stuff. And I'm talking about people are stopping me out there. They know me from the jail and like, it's totally wild. Out. In fact, I had a gal I was coming out of Chili's today, right? This guy stops me and talks to me and his, and I said, where this a young woman, she was probably in her thirties. I said, where do I know you from? I always see you. She said, I'm just really friendly. And I see you at food max. You buy food at food max. And, uh, so anyway, I don't know. I, now I lost my train of thought. I don't know what I was saying about her in any way. We, we got to talking and, and uh, she made some crazy point about something. Anyway, let me go on with this, uh, uh, establishing free and I, I just, I don't know, you know, something we are going to create a problem. <laughs> 
We are going to create a jungle. It's going to be a carnival down there. And, uh, oh, here's what she told me. She said, my husband, I was talking about behind Walmart, right? Behind Lenhurst Boulevard. And, and I went back in there where that Sierra uh, Lumber Company was at one time. And it was all concrete back there. And I went and dropped my friend off, right? He's a heroin addict. And, and, all, and he had a trailer back there. And they had run him out of the river bottoms, right? Robert Bendorf and those people. And they were all resettled like a bunch of pigeons. You stir them up and they circle, circle, circle and land right back there, right? And so they'd circled and landed. Well, anyway, she said her husband works over there at this business over there called Cement, CMAX or something like that. I don't know what it is. And she, he went over there and found a gal shot over there. I thought, you know, so I don't know. Have you noticed when you look in the Appeal Democrat, look at the crime briefs. I've been, I've become a habit now. Uh, when people people loan me their appeal Democrat after their their used appeal Democrats, and uh, and because I like to read them, but I won't pay for one, and uh, so, but I look at the crime briefs and I look for where it said you know how they print their addresses now you know how in the paper Santos they quit telling when they arrest a Mexican dude whether it's illegal or not right they don't say he's a citizen or they just le- they stay away from that now in the paper. Well, now I think the next thing is going to be in the appeal Democrat. Watch for it. Normally they'll say they arrested Lou Benninger who lives on the, the 600 block of 11th street. They'll that's how they'll say it. And he did this and so, and this and so, but if you're homeless, they'll put Lou Benninger homeless, right? That's the next thing to go. They'll eliminate any stigma because that's being unkind to that person. So unless any stigma so they'll just put Lou Benninger got arrested. I could be like from Mars, right? I could be slipping in here from Mars unawares or an angel unaware. And they would say, Hey, Lou angel unaware. He got arrested. So anyway, that's the next thing to go. But if you look at the crime briefs, you're going to see how many people are doing crimes that are homeless. Now I had a gal, I saw on Facebook, this gal told this story. She's out at Shanghai bend subdivision right where all the homeless are living they've taken up encampment and the the police department the sheriff's department says we can't arrest our way out of that so i i'm all here's what i'm for let's quit arresting perverts because we're not going to be arrested you know as far as i know we've always been making arrests i've been i've been alive almost 100 years and they've always been arresting people for my whole time but i this is the first time i've ever heard them say we're not going to arrest our way out of this so i thought well, hey, why, why don't we cut down our police force in half, save the money, fix the roads, and just and just not arrest our way out of it. Just let people go. So if people are screwing the wrong people, or they're screwing them and they didn't want to do that, or they're stealing stuff, right? Because right now, we've already kind of started that in Marysville. We don't steal. We, if, they're stealing a, if they're stealing something from inside the store, like CVS, $150, we might cite them. If they steal a shopping cart, uh, we just say, hallelujah, God bless you, right? That's what we do in the city of Marisol. If you steal a $150 shopping cart, it's, it's, it's like, hey, it's, it, we're making a contribution. That's typical for government, right, to say we're going to make a contribution on behalf of CVS, right? None of the police police department ever donates one hundred and fifty dollars to CVS for that shopping cart to be stolen, right? You'd think if a cop's going to let something be stolen, he would give one hundred fifty bucks to the owner. Do you think so? I just I don't know. It's just logical to me. It's just something to think about. So anyway, uh, we got problems. Do you remember the Tony? That where are we? How much time we have? You got you know two minutes. It's over. We're almost over. Oh, my God. Well, uh, it's been a good show today for me. Uh, we're in the middle of the night here, out here, and Santos has got to go to work in a few hours, and i got to get up and get ready to go to a tip training. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this show. If you didn't, don't listen anymore. You can. There's plenty of other places to listen to. Next week, uh, that would be, uh, let's see, Ad 7. That must be the 30th of September. There's a good chance a big chance that Nathan black, who is a really sharp guy, uh, auditor controller of Sutter County is going to be here 
and have a show and it'll, I think you should listen to it because he's got, a, he'll have some good interviews and he'll have some really intelligent things to say that you normally wouldn't hear on the air here. So, uh, listen up and it's going to be live and wiki man's going to run it. So you could probably call in and everything that day. So, uh, have a good week and love you. And I hope you do right and uh, stand up for the right thing. All right. Find out what's going on and kick some rear out there. See you later.